Hello people, my name is Ferdy and in this tutorial I will show you step by step how you can create an amazing header within Elementor Pro. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. You will learn how to create a header from scratch using the new Flexbox container, how to make it sticky, transparent. We'll talk about conditional logic so you can place specific headers on specific pages in your website. And I will teach you how to show another header on your website when you are scrolling. And as always, I will show you how to optimize everything for all devices. In the description of this video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part in the tutorial, you can click on one of those timestamps and you go directly to that part of the tutorial. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings here at YouTube, playback speed, slow down the speed of this tutorial. And if you want to go back a few seconds in the video, just hit the left arrow on your keyboard and you'll go back five seconds in the video. So let's get started. But before we do, if you like this video, please like it and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials. So I have a website over here made with Elementor, the free version. And if you want to learn how to create this website, you can click over here and I'll show you step by step how to create this website. So what we're going to do, we're going to use Elementor Pro to create a header, this area in our WordPress website. I assume you already have Elementor Pro. If you don't have it, you can get it over here by going to ferdicorp.com forward slash Elementor, hit enter. You'll be redirected to this page and you can see three different plans. They are exactly the same except for one thing, the amount of websites you can use it on. So if you want to use it for only one website, you should go with the essential plan, $59 per year. And here below you see everything it includes. You have more widgets, more templates. You have a complete theme builder. You can create anything within the website using Elementor Pro. WooCommerce Store Builder, a landing page builder, a pop-up builder. We're going to use it in this tutorial. A form builder, more marketing tools, and premium support. I've been using Elementor since 2017, and I love it. I love the free version, and I love the pro version even more. If you want to get it, click on Buy Now. Then you need to fill in your email, create a password, enter your billing details, choose a payment method. And then you will go to your own Elementor account. You can go to Subscriptions, and then click on Download Zip. There it goes. I close this. I go to the back end of my website to plugins, add new, upload plugin, drag it over here and click on install now. You need to have the free version of Elementor installed, otherwise this does not work. Activate the plugin. Great. Now if I go to Elementor, I go to license and I make sure that everything is connected. Voila! With Elementor Pro and the Flexbox container, we have a lot of flexibility. So let me show you how we can create containers within containers. Now, what I can do, I can go below Elementor to templates and I can go to the theme builder. I click on it. Look at this. We can create a custom header, a custom footer, a single post template, a single page template, an archive template, a search results template, a loop item. I'm going to create tutorials about all these features and of course a 404 page template. They're all empty. We can make use of pre-made templates or we can start from scratch. And what you can do with everything you create over here, a header for instance, or a footer, you can assign it to specific pages based on certain conditions. So I can say this header, which I'm going to create should only be displayed on the homepage for every other page in the website. I should use a different one. So I'm going to show you how it works. So what I will do, I will click on the header plus I can choose a template, but I want to start from scratch. I close this. Okay. What I can do now, I can go to the settings here and I call this one the homepage header and I click on publish and then I need to add some conditions. So I had a condition that says that this header should only be displayed on a singular page which is the front page. I save it and I close it. So now when I would go to my homepage, I see nothing because at this moment, this header is displayed. But since there's nothing, I don't see anything over here. So what I can do, I can click on the plus and I can choose a structure. So maybe think I want to have a logo at the left and a menu at the right. So I choose this one. But since we're working with the Flexbox container, I want to go with this one. All the elements within this container will be placed next to each other from left to right. So I click over here 
And now I can go to the plus and I can add an element. The first thing I want to add is an image. I don't use the site logo. I use an image. So I drag it over here. I click on this image over here and I can choose one. You can upload a file or choose one from your library. I choose this one and I select it and there it goes. Now I can click on the plus and I can add a menu. So I search for menu. There it is, a WordPress menu. I can drag it here at the right and I should see something pink or at the left. And by default, it uh, chooses a menu. If you don't have a menu, go to your website, to the customizer, go to menus, create a new menu. And when you've done that, you can click on next and then you can add items. So you can create a new page. You can add posts, landing pages, categories, tags. So I've created a few menus and by default it chooses a menu, probably based on alphabetical order. I choose the main menu. Great. Now I want to add something else. So I click on the plus and I go for a button. I don't have to search for it. I can also scroll over here. Basic. Where is the button? I drag it over here. And sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, like that. So I can change the order. But what I also can do, I can click over here, go to the structure, and now it is a little bit more easy. So I drag this over here. And this is how I want it to be displayed. So a few things I want to do in order to show you exactly what is going on. I want to create a new container below this one. So I click on the plus. This one has an arrow down. Then I want to go to the style. And I want to give it a dark background so we can see exactly where our menu appears. So style, background, background type. I go for a gradient and I already have a few global colors. Why? Because I already made a website using the free version of Elementor. So I choose this second color and then for the other gradient color, I choose a dark color. If you want to work with global colors, click on this icon, side settings, go to global colors. There I can choose a few and you can add custom colors. So going back, close this, click over here. I go to the layout and I bring the height to 700. I publish it. And now if I refresh the homepage, this will be gone. It will be pushed down. If I refresh it, I see it over here. Well, I think this is it. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Feel free to like the video, blah, blah, blah. No, we're uh, totally not there yet. What I want to do, I want to make it look better, of course, but now we, we know at least how much space we have over here. So a few things I want to do in order to make it look better. I want to go to the container. And also here, if you cannot select somehow, you can go to the structure, click on the container. You can also double click on the name and change it to main header. And this one. Temp container so for a short amount of time until it is finished. So I go to the settings over here of the container. And right now we see the direction is from left to right. I can also bring it from right to left or everything below each other. Well, I want it to be from the left to the right. And then I want to justify the content, but how? Do I want to keep everything at the left? No. Or maybe at the right or in the center? No. What I prefer? is to have space between. So the first element is totally at the left. The last item is totally at the right and everything in between is in between. You can also have space around and space evenly, but I prefer space between. This is on top instead of in the center. So in order to align this the right way, we can go to the align items area, bring it to the center. And that's more what I have in mind. Now I can go to the individual areas, to the image. I want to go to the style, image size, change it to 300. Go to the style, change the width from percentage to pixels. And I would like to say 220. Then I go back to content. I need to, this to be a link. So I go to link, custom URL, forward slash. So no matter where I am in the website, if I click on this link, I go to the homepage. Then I go to this button over here. I change the text to contact without a capital. 
because I want all the other items in my menu to be without capitals. That's the style of my website. I go to the style of the button and in the background, I want it to be yellow. So the background color, color one. And then when I hover over it, I want it to be green. So at the hover, background type color, I choose the color green like that. Then I scroll down a bit and I want to go for the border radius. I bring it to 25, 30, as long as that is a round edge, like a 50% circle here and here. That's what I like. If you do 10, it looks like that. Well, I prefer it to be like this. So far, so good. I click on publish. I refresh the page. And it's getting better. If I scroll down, it looks like that. With Elementor Pro and the Flexbox container, we have a lot of flexibility. So let me show you how we can create containers within containers. But what I prefer is that this menu over here aligns to the right area, to the button that is next to each other. Well, there are a few ways uh, to achieve that. I can click over here, go to advanced, uncheck the margin, go to right and hit arrow down and then take a break. And then meanwhile, watch a movie because it takes a long time or you go for 500 and add a zero. Wow, it's aligning. You can do it that way. I prefer to click on the plus and insert a container in the container. And that's the great thing with the Flexbox container. You can create containers in the container. So again, I click on the plus, I go for the container and I drag it over here like that. And now I can drag the menu over here and the button also over here. So I have actually two areas now, a logo and a container. And in that container, I have those two elements, but they don't look that good. So I click on the container. I can go to the settings and I say direction should be from the left to the right or from the right to the left. And in that way, it's automatically aligned to the right. So that's what I prefer. And then I drag this to the right. So now I have the same result and I'm happy with this. So now my menu aligns to the right. Great. What I see, the height increased a little bit. Now I think with this height that the logo is a little bit small. So in order to make sure that this is a normal height, I go to the container and I change the minimum height. And you see, I cannot bring it lower than 70. So let's bring it lower than 70, 45. Now I need to go to this container to advanced and change the padding to nothing. You see what happened? There's no outer spacing anymore. I can also go to the container, advanced, and do the same thing like that. But I prefer to have some space over here. So I turn it on, link it together, and increase it a bit. You know what? I only want it to be at the top and the bottom. So at the right, I say zero, and at the left, also zero. Then I go over here to the container and I can increase it or decrease it. And if I want everything to be pixel perfect, I go over here, advanced, make everything zero again. And now if I go to the layout, I can say how high it should be. So I prefer 70. And then I think the logo can be a bit bigger. Yes. So we have our menu over here. Let me show you how you can style it. I go to my menu. Let me publish it first. Now we can style the menu. So over here at content, I selected the main menu. I can also have a different menu. As you see, it can be horizontal. It can be vertical. It can be a drop down. I can align it to the left, to the right, to the center. And if I hover over it, I see a pointer here below that line. I can change the pointer from underline to overline or to background 
to framed or my favorite one none i want to keep it simple when i hover over it i want it to be a different color that's all then there's a sub menu indicator this one i want to change it to this one because i like uh, chevrolet's cars i think it looks better that's why i decided to do that later we're going to talk about the mobile drop down so right now i'm fine with this then i go to the style i change the typography by clicking here family and i go for new nito sounds if you're searching for a good font go to fonts.google.com you can search for anything If you see something you like, Montserrat, Noto Sans, my favorite Nunito Sans, you can choose the one. So feel free to take a look at this. Quick send. So I've chosen Nunito Sans. And I can increase the size. So how about that? 18. Then I go to the button style typography i say nito sans and then also 18. i go to this container make sure that the alignment is in the center and then this goes down a bit so it's a uh, it's perfectly aligned now go back over here to the colors the text color i want it to be color four it's a dark color it's not completely black it's it's dark and when i hover over it look at this i want the color to become color one. Oh, interesting when i hover over here i want it to be green okay interesting what else over here i can have a divider so if you want that you can Fix that, change the width, change the height. So, so if I want to take it serious, I can make it one, make it solid, change the color to something lighter until you think, okay, I like this, but I prefer not to have a divider. Horizontal padding. So the space between, you can increase it or decrease it. Then there's the vertical padding. I leave it as this, and there's the space between. It's actually the same as horizontal padding. I'm okay with it. Then there's the drop down, this area. What I don't like is that it starts above this line. I want it to start exactly on this green area. So I go to the drop down. Let's take a look at the colors later. Uh, the vertical padding is what I'm searching for. So I can click over here, then I hover. And then I increase it. I can create some space in between. Okay. Then the distance, select it and look at this. Now I can bring it down until I think, yes, this is perfect. And I think it's perfect. So I choose 12. Then I go up. And what I want when I hover over it, I want this to be orange, the background. So I create all the text colors, color. Or okay, the background color is white. When I hover over it, I want the background color to be orange and the text color to be white. When it's active, I want it to be the same. Well, by default. So if I don't change active here, it will take these settings. So look at this. Beautiful. I can go to the typography and also make those 18 and Nunito Sans. And I think 18 is too big. So I say 16. So far, so good. Refresh. I like it. It looks clean. It works. And as I said, when it's active, it should stay 
with a orange background and a white text. So if I would go to the branding page and I hover over here again, this will be highlighted. I cannot do that right now because it doesn't have a header, but look at this. If I would click on command E, control E, and I go to the theme builder and I go to the header, I can adjust the conditions. So I can edit the conditions by clicking here. And I click and click on the plus and I can say include the singular page called branding. There you go. Save and close. Now, if I go back to the homepage and if I go to web design, I see nothing. But if I go to branding, this header is here. And now you see this is highlighted. So that's how it works with uh, conditions. And what I want to do now, I want to close this. I want to include it on the entire website. Save and close. So now I go to the about page. I'm here at the about page and it works. So um, that's how you can do that. And if you want to edit it, I click on edit with Elementor homepage header. Until this point in the tutorial, our header is static. It does not move. Let's make it sticky. As I said, so far so good, but we can also make it better. So I can hover over here, go to the container, go to advanced. I close the layout area, go to motion effects, and there I can make this whole container sticky. So if I say top and I scroll down, it sticks with us and that reveals something. It reveals that this container has no background. It's transparent. So in order to give it a background, I go to the style, background type, classic, and I choose for the color white. Voila. And now we have a sticky header and it's sticky everywhere. So if I go to the tablet view, it sticks with us. In the mobile view, it also sticks with us. I don't want that. I only want it to be sticky on a big screen. So here's sticky on, I delete tablet and mobile. So it's only sticky on the big screen. If I go to tablet, it does not stick with us. Publish. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to optimize our header for all devices. So I select the container. I go to the layout and at the padding, I want to say 20 everywhere or 10. That's better. Then this now is a menu and that makes our website look a little bit weird. I click here. I see the content area of the WordPress menu. I scroll down and I want to change the mobile drop down this area to a full width area. Now, if I click, it looks like this. I want to align the text to the center and the toggle button right now is a hamburger. I want to keep it that way. Okay. Publish. Okay. Let's go to the style of the drop down and let's see what we can do. The vertical padding. And I like to increase or make the, the text bigger. So I click here. And since I see this icon, that means that I can give this a different setting than on the desktop. So if I make this really big, when I go to the big screen, it's normal. So that's what you can do with, with all the areas where you see an icon, a tablet or a smartphone or a desktop. That means that you can have specific settings for only that device. So uh, this is a little bit too big. So for the tablet, I make it a bit smaller. How about even smaller? 20. Great. Publish. This all looks fine in my opinion. I go to the mobile view and now I think, okay, we need to fix some things. So first I want to get rid of the contact area. I click here. Go to advanced, close this. I go to responsive and I say hide this on a mobile. 
So on the mobile, we do not see the contact button. We only see the hamburger. But right now, I see everything on top of each other. I don't want that. I want it to be next to each other. How can I do that? If I go to the container, layout, and I change the wrap to no wrap. Now everything will be next to each other. Let me publish it. See the result. Go to the website. And now it looks like this. Well, I think the logo is a bit, a bit small. This looks fine. Let me make it bigger. So over here, style. I want to say 400. Now things shift, but it's because this button is in the way. But since it's hidden on a smartphone, you'll see it correctly on the screen. One more thing. I click over here, tablet view. I go to the style and then I go to the toggle button and the color. I want it to be color four, the dark color. In the background, I can change it to this one, but what I prefer is it to be transparent. So I drag the lower slider to the left. Publish. Refresh. This is the tablet view. And the smartphone view. Perfect. When I hover over it, I want it to become orange. So in order to fix that, I go to hover, color, white, background, orange, like that. Publish. So we have a simple header right now. It looks great. It is sticky. And on other devices, it's looking great. But there's so much more we can do. There's so much more we can do in Elementor Pro. For instance, we can create a top header. Let me show you how you can do that. So let's talk about that. Maybe you want to have a top header, for instance. How can you do that? Well, really simple. You click on the plus area from left to right. You can give it a background if you want to. I can go for a gradient. Color two and color four. Change the angle. I can drag it on top of everything else. And I want to click on the plus and I want to go for a text, text editor. And besides that, I want to go for social media icons, social icons. There you go. I go. To the structure, bring this low, double click, top, header, and now I can configure this. Because right now, if I would publish it, I refresh the page, it looks like that. So first, I want to go to the icons. I click here. Of course, you can change the icons, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You can also add something else, WordPress, or you click on the icon. Search for something. So LinkedIn, for instance, my personal ID is that you should never use this. When people go to your website, you should be able to point them to one thing. And that's the thing you want most, uh, make use of your service. So actually you don't want them to go to your social media because that's a distraction of what you actually want them to do. You don't want to go to your social media, but you want to go to get in contact with you or to the pricing page. But for the people that want to use this, let me show you. I close this shape right now is rounded columns automated. I go to the style. I want to use custom colors. Primary one I can make it orange so I can see which color it is. The second one, I want it to be white and the primary color transparent. The size, I can make it bigger. I prefer to make it a bit small. The padding and the spacing zero. And then we can increase it. 
when you hover over it, I want it to become orange. Okay. And I'll also over here at the container layout, I want everything to be in the center like that. And of course, evenly space between. Perfect. Then I go to the text. I say, call us at and this uh, gives a, a, a weird extra space. What I can do, command X or control X, go to the text, paste it. Now it looks normal. I can make this a link command control K. And then you can add a phone number or a link. Right now I leave it like this. So it's a small glitch, I think. So I need to do something over here, space and then backspace. And it looks normal. I go to the style, text color, make it white. And if I want to, this color or this link. I change the color to a custom color and then I can place the code over here. Okay. Go back to the text space backspace. And then I can go to typography. A bit smaller. Then I click over here, container. I go to advanced and add a padding. I uncheck this. So now I can decide exactly how much pixels it should have. Publish, refresh. Great. Uh, there's a small uh, difference over here. So what I can do, I can go to this element, advanced. Uncheck the margin and then at the left, I increase it a bit. Publish. Better. It does not stick with us because I did not say that it should. Um, if I would do that, I go to advanced motion effects, top, sticky top. Let's see how that's going with uh, the other area also being sticky. I refresh the page. So now it sticks both and you see there's a, a weird glitch. So what I can do, I can go to the container advanced and then go to motion effects, sticky top, but I can give it an offset and I can increase it until it starts moving. So I say 32. So the height of this area is 32 and look at this now. Make it sticky. It both sticks perfectly. So I don't want this area to be sticky, so I can turn it off. But now I still have a gap over here when I, when I scroll down. Look at this. Look at the white area of the header. You see, there's still a gap because that's of because of the offset. If you want that, hey, be my guest. It has a nice effect so uh, but it's up to you i prefer not to do it so i bring it back to zero but hey it's possible the idea that it is possible makes me so happy some things in life even though you're never going to use them the fact the idea that they are possible wow 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 okay what was that let's continue how does it look on a different device Okay, again, go over here, uncheck left, and also here at the right, a bit, uncheck right, and on a phone, great, publish, refresh. So. This is, in my opinion, a basic header. It's clean. It 
serves beautiful purpose in our website. And now if I would get rid of this area and I publish it and I refresh the page, it helps the visitor to navigate through the website and it is optimized for all devices. It's on every page as you see. So that looks great. What else can we do? We can play around with our hobbies. What we also can do, we can play around with the breakpoint settings of our website. So let's do that. If I make the screen smaller, look at this. Make it smaller, everything looks fine. And all of a sudden, look at this. What is this? This is a breakpoint. This is the moment where, where Elementor decides that from now on, with this width of the website, it will be shown in tablet view. I can change that. So if I keep it like this and I go to Elementor, I click over here. I go to the mobile drop down and I say the breakpoint should be mobile. I click on publish and I refresh the page. Look at this. The menu should be back. And it is. So I can also say that on a tablet, this menu should still be visible. So I can make it smaller and sit from the moment that it is a mobile view, then this will appear. And maybe when I'm changing the width, you think, but Ferdy, this doesn't look great. This looks weird, but that's not a problem because people don't do this when they're on my website. There are actually only three views. This one. So don't forget the changing of stuff. And this is the second one. And this is the third one. So it doesn't matter if things float around a little bit weird when, when I make it smaller. The thing is, how do I want things to look? So now if I go to the tablet, to the tablet view, it looks like this. If I want that, I can choose that. But I prefer this one. That's what I wanted to show you. This portion with the width stuff and tablet breakpoint was free. Now let's continue with the, the paid stuff. What do I mean by that? I have no idea. I think we have a beautiful header, but what we also can do, we can assign certain headers to specific pages in our website. So I can say that the header we have created so far will be used on all other web, uh, on all other pages except for the homepage. For the homepage, I can create a different header. What I want to do for the homepage, I want to create a transparent header and show you what is possible. At this moment, this header is shown on the whole website. So if I go to the about page, it looks like that and it looks fantastic, but it can be that on the homepage, you prefer to have a transparent header. Well, it's not possible. Then you need to buy Elementor Pro in combination with Divi and Gutenberg and Bricks and Breakdance and Joomla, a little bit of Drupal and Front Page Express. Of course, I'm kidding. If you want to do this in Elementor Pro as possible, we need to duplicate this area first. So I go to the back end, to Templates, Theme Builder. I go to the header and then I click over here, the three dots and I say Export. There it goes. So now I want to edit the conditions. I want to say include in the entire website except for the home page. So front page, save and close. If I go to the website, I see no header. But if I go to the about page, there is one. So what can I do? I go to the home page or to the back end. Go to templates, theme builder, and I go for the header and I click on add new. This time I close this. I click on the icon over here, header settings. I call this one header homepage. Awesome. Publish. The condition is only show this on the homepage. The front page. I click on the folder, click on this arrow up, and then I can drag this over here. 
enable and import. And there it is, the homepage header, insert. There you go. So I publish it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at davidcorp.com, I have exactly the same header, but uh, another version. It's for the homepage. And now, if I take a look at the about page and the homepage, it's exactly the same. But there are two different templates. So now I can make this template for the homepage transparent. How can I do that? Let me show you. I click on the plus here below, arrow down. I edit the container style. Background should be color two and color four. I change it the, the rotation and I go to the layout and I say it can be 600. So if I go to this header, this whole white area, and I click on it and I go to the style and I change the color from white to nothing transparent. Not a lot is changing because the background is also white. So what I want to do the header container, I want to go to advanced and I know that this is 70 pixels in height. So I uncheck this and again, and here at the bottom, I uncheck this and here at the bottom, minus 70. So I do seven and then a zero. Bam. Awesome. Except for one thing. I can't see my header anymore. Not everything. The, the logo is gone. So what I will do, I'll go to the structure. And at the main header, I go to advanced and then I need to go to the Z index and I say 10. That means that the main header is in front of the container. That needs to be the case. So a few things I want to change now. I want to change the logo. I go to the logo, choose a different image and I use the same image, but with a light text. So that's better for a dark background. I go over here to the style. And I change the text color to white. So far, so good. If I publish it and I refresh the page, it looks like this. So what I do now over here, I get rid of the container. Okay. Publish. So now I will see on the home page, I can see through the background a bit. And in order to show it even better, I click on edit with Elementor. I go to the hero, which is this area, go to the style, background overlay. I choose an image. And now you can see it better. So right now this area is transparent and when I scroll down, it sticks with us, but then the background is still transparent. I don't like that. Something else we can do. A few things we can do. I can go to the main header again, go to the style, close this and I go to the border and then at the bottom, I can say have a solid color. So I uncheck this and at the bottom I say, oh, what's going on? What is going on? I'll be back. Two. Give it a color. Orange. Publish. Refresh. I can create something like this or also make it transparent. We can make it white. Let people see through, through, through. Make it one. Refresh. Something like that. And what I also can do, I can go to the background of the main header, background, and decide to make it black, but then transparent. And then it looks like this. So when I scroll down, you can see through it, as you see. But you still can read the text a bit. And if you think it's still not what I want to be, you can make the background darker. So less transparent. Play around with that or give it a little bit the color that you have in mind. 
this is really dark. But wait, there is a better way. Okay, we're coming to a close. And what I want to do, I want to end with a highlight or with, with, with something I personally really like. We're going to use a little bit of CSS and I will walk you through the whole process. We can create a totally different header on scroll. So we have a beautiful header on a static website with a static header that's not moving. When you scroll down, you can slide in a totally different header or the same header with different colors. Let me show you how you can do that. So let me go back to the header over here. I go to the header background and I want to make it transparent again, fully transparent. Refresh. Okay. What I want, when I scroll down, I don't want this to stick with us, but I want to have a brand new header with a white background. How can I do that? Let me show you. I go back, I go to this header. And what I say at advanced layout, I close it, motion effects. I do not stick it anymore. So I say none. I want to have none of it. Sorry, sometimes I get happy and angry at the same time. I call this one main header. Static. Now I want to duplicate this header. I click on that header, double click and make it sticky. Sticky. Okay. I click over here, go to advanced and here I say 200. So I can see the, the two different menus and see what's going on over here. I go to the style color of the background is white. Then I go to this logo, change it to the dark logo again. I go to the text, to the style, color one, sorry, prefer color four. Okay. So this is what, what we see on the homepage when we enter the website. And this is what we see when we are scrolling. So let me let me click here. Go to advanced, bring back the margin top to zero. Did I already make it sticky? Click here, advanced motion effects, sticky top. What I want, I want this header with the white background to appear after a few pixels. So I say effects offset should be 250. Publish. Refresh. This is how it looks. But what I see when I scroll down, the white background menu is um, in front of the transparent one. I don't want that. So how can I fix this? I get a script for that at 30 corp.com. Hit enter. Then I go to tutorials, Elementor Pro. I scroll down a lot until I see the script that says exactly what we want. Change the complete header on scroll. That's what I want. So there's a sticky header. Yes, this is it. Copy. I go back to Elementor. Now I go to the main header sticky, advanced layout, and then I give this sticky a CSS plus. And I call this one sticky dash header. So now when I paste a script, which contains um, sticky header, I, it knows that it should be applied on this container. So I paste this and depending on the height of your header, you should change this number. So my header height is 70. So that's why I have minus 70 over here. So now if I publish it and I refresh the page, the white background is gone. I see my transparent header, but when I scroll down, look at this, after 250 pixels, there it appears and it goes away again. It works. So right now you see my header, I scroll down and after 250 pixels, my new menu appears. I see everything, how it should be seen. So that is how it works. And the great thing is, since we have two different headers, again, I can click over here, layout give it some space so I can work on this one. I can do something else with this. So I can say over here, for instance, um, WordPress menu, 
the button delete. Okay, go to the structure again, WordPress menu. I bring it a bit more to the center. Make this one a bit smaller. So image. And I think uh, this should be more in the center. So give me some time. Publish. Uh, I should not forget to bring this back to zero. Publish again. Now it looks like this when I enter the website and when I scroll down, my menu is in the center. And this gives you so much flexibility. And of course, when you change something over here, make sure it also looks good on other devices, which I've shown you how you can do that. So this gives you so much freedom to do whatever you want to do. You can have a completely different header. And the great thing is that this is only applied to the homepage. So if I go to the about page, it looks like that. And then only this area sticks with us because this has already a, a white background. So I said that the other template should be displayed on the whole website and only on the homepage. I want to have a transparent header and a sticky one that is completely different. And with a few CSS things, we adjusted everything. So one more thing I can go to the, let me, let me go over here, bring this back to 200. I can go or 2000. I can click here advanced. I go to motion effects and I can say, and I can change the entrance animation to fade in down. Also at the menu, I can say motion effects fade in down after a half second and the contact button. I can also let it be fade in down after a second. So a thousand milliseconds. I can make it slower, etc. So if I publish it and I refresh the page, there's a nice animation. Let me go to the home page. Oh wait. Let me bring this back. Publish. And now it looks like this. And then I scroll down and this one appears. So that's how you can make headers in Elementor Pro. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you want to learn more about Elementor Pro or WordPress or affiliate marketing or WooCommerce or about WordPress related stuff, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would appreciate it. My name is Shirley. It still is. Nothing changed in the latest 48 minutes. And um, I wish you a great day. Good luck with making websites and bye-bye.